Ever wondered what it's like to work in the apparel and fashion industry in Chicago? How a designer started their brand? Or what a production workroom looks like? Then join us as we go for a visit. Today, we're in Westtown visiting our neighbor, Anna Hovit diaz at Hovit Fashion Studio. My name is Anna Hobit Diaz and you are at Hobit Fashion Studio. So ever since I was a kid, I was obsessed with clothes. So I always wanted to design clothes or style clothes. And I went to the School of the Art Institute when I moved here in 2007 and got my degree in fashion design and fashion illustration, and then have worked in the fashion industry ever since. Anything can be happening here at Hobit Fashion. We have all kinds of clients coming in to work with Lauren and Courtney to help start their fashion line. Lauren and Courtney walk them through the whole production and manufacturing process. And then we also have lessons, private lessons and group lessons. And we have goalie Kate and Blair who help with sewing classes and draping and pattern making and help students learn how to create their own clothing. Usually when I come into Hobbit, I'm doing all different things. I manage the business, so what I do is a lot of the invoicing and the marketing and kind of overseeing the day-to-day -day operations, but I also have some private clients. I personally teach fashion design and fashion illustration here. Well, I have a new baby, so most of my mornings just revolve around me like getting the baby all ready and having a nanny come in and getting everything ready at home and then like running out the door and then if i make it here on time that's great so i don't have any particular rituals every morning i just need to get my baby settled and then i'm off to work you know work-life balance has always been difficult for me because i love working i have four jobs i'm working all the time but ever since i had a baby i've been really good about separating work and home and how i do it is like some days i have that whole day of work and some days i'm completely off and i have to shut my phone off or shut my computer off and i have to be able to be at home with my family and then the days that i'm here i'll have like a 12-hour day and have meetings back to back all day so i can get it all done it's always difficult to like balance those two things especially when you are running your own business because there's never not work. Like there's always things you can be doing. You could be growing your business. You could be doing more freelance work. You could be making more money doing this or that. So you have to make a conscious choice to like break up your week into segments in order to mentally, you know, stay within it all. I think as any entrepreneur will tell you, I do everything at my business. I mean, you know, day-to-day -day operations, to finances, legal, marketing, I'm doing anything and everything for my whole small business. I try to contract out things a little more than I used to, but when I started my business, it was actually a fashion line, and I used to do everything from pattern making and designing, running the production process, making the website, and now I've finally grown to a point where I can actually contract some things out. But as any small business owner will tell you, like my day-to-day -day is different every day. So in 2009, I started a fashion line called Anna Hovit, and it was mostly athleisure, all manufactured in Chicago, and I had that fashion line for nine years. It was amazing. I had so much fun with it. It was so fun to create my own clothes and to see strangers wearing my clothes. Um, and then after nine years, I decided to kind of pivot my business and do more classes and consulting. So we transitioned in 2018 to Hobbit Fashion Studio to take all the skills that I had learned over the last 10 years and help other people do it. And I also hired several working Chicago fashion professionals who are extremely highly skilled to teach new up and coming designers or hobbyists how to do these cool skills. I grew up in North Dakota, and so the idea of being a fashion designer was like a long lost dream of mine. Like I didn't know any fashion designers. I knew they existed, but I didn't think that I would actually be one. It was what I wanted to do, but it was like such a far off dream. And then after going to school for it, and then working in a corporate environment for a little bit, and then starting my own line, one day I woke up and I was like, holy cow, I did it. I am a living, breathing fashion designer, and I still am, and it's so great, and I love doing it every day and I love teaching it to people and I'm just so excited when other people launch their fashion lines and get to see their creations on others. So this was definitely part of what I thought growing up, but it's just 
pivoted in different ways. I think in the fashion industry, you always have to be flexible and open to all different opportunities and kind of create a path through your opportunities to get to where you eventually want to be. Fashion Studio is a creative workspace for people to learn how to do all things fashion. We have hobbyist classes where you can learn how to sew and drape and illustrate. And then we also have a wing of our business where we can help you start your fashion line. So right now you're in Pulpit Fashion Studio. We've actually been in this space for about 12 years and we have space for sewing machines and tables for cutting. And so all of our hobbyist clients can work in here. And then we also have office space where we help people start their fashion lines. And we're not manufacturing it for them, but we're constantly meeting with clients, helping them design their lines, and then we're contracting out all of that work. So ideally we'd love a slightly bigger space so we could have bigger classes and then a separate office. We share this studio space with a couple other local designers, but here in my area, we have three instructors, Goalie, Blair, and Kate. And then we also have our production coordinator, Lauren Marked, and her assistant, Courtney. So we're kind of all in here at different times. Everyone has different availability, different schedules, but we do cross over and it's really fun to have such awesome people in our workspace. We have a really good company culture and we're all friends and it's just fun being able to like create with people and then see what other people are working on. So one of the reasons I started Hovit Fashion Studio is I felt like there were a lot of people who wanted to learn fashion skills beyond sewing, but they weren't ready to commit to a full college curriculum. And depending on where you're going in the fashion industry, I don't know if you always need a full college degree in fashion. So we do a lot of a la carte classes that they can come in and they can just learn tech packs or they can just learn how to do specs or sewing or draping or illustration. And then if they feel they wanna put all these things together, they can later go get a college education or they can start their own line and contract out a lot of the skills that they don't have. Sustainability is an interesting term. I mean, you can never be 100% sustainable in your practices, but because we're teaching people how to make their own clothes, we're teaching people how to mend their own clothes, and then we're starting small batch fashion lines for people, we are inherently being sustainable by helping them reduce the amount of production of clothing in the US. I think I'm really connected to the industry here in Chicago. I've been working in the industry here for about 17 years. I also am the executive director of the Chicago Fashion Incubator, and we help local designers start their brands. And then I teach at the School of the Art Institute, so I also get to meet a lot of students who are in the fashion industry. I think Chicago has a really unique community of fashion professionals. A lot of them have been around for a long time. A lot of people know each other, and it's a really nice community to be part of. I'm hoping that it grows in the coming years. I think 10 years ago, Chicago fashion was a big deal. And over the last decade, it's really shrunk a little bit. So I think we are ready for some sort of resurgence in the next couple of years because we have so much fashion talent here in Chicago and they don't have to move to New York or LA or elsewhere. They have a lot of resources here. I think Chicago could use a little more support, specifically around press. I think 10 years ago, Chicago Press really did a good job highlighting local fashion designers. And you don't see a lot of local fashion designers in magazines or on television as much as you used to. So I think that could be a really good way to get more press on Chicago designers, highlight them more, and then potentially get them more sales. I think the city could also do a better job you know, funding events. They used to do Fashion Focus, which was Chicago's official fashion week. And they used to pour a ton of money into having these big tented fashion shows at Millennium Park. If we could bring that back and do a well curated fashion event every fall, I think that would bring a lot of attention back to Chicago designers. I think with any fashion business, cash flow is a really difficult thing. If you're starting a fashion line, you're paying for so many things up front, your raw materials and your production, and then you're not selling them to up to a year, two years later. So that's always a struggle. I think people in the creative industry also aren't in the same conversations as financial people. So we don't have the same access to capital or the financial education that other industries do. So I think that would be the biggest thing. Um, also sales, I mean, sales are hard. Instagram is so oversaturated with ads, it's hard to break through that noise. And then getting wholesale accounts that are willing to take the risk on a new designer, also really difficult. Um, manufacturing apparel is also difficult. Like actually, you know, putting all the pieces together to get a final product from concept to delivery. There's so many moving parts and the fashion industry is very like handshake deal you know, finding a factory and finding a pattern maker and finding these things, like it's a difficult 
web to navigate. So there's a lot of difficult reasons why there aren't more fashion designers. But I think if you have a really big passion for creating clothing, you'll figure those things out. And if you have a really good product, you will sell it and then be able to bootstrap or get investors to help you grow your business. For my career, I just hope to continue doing and growing the things that I'm already implementing. I hope to grow Hobbit Fashion Studio, get more instructors in here, get more you know, people taking fashion lessons, and then also more clients to help them start their fashion line. So if you're coming into the fashion industry, there's a lot of different routes you can take. Um, it's very competitive, but my advice has always been don't quit. If it's something you really want to do, everyone else around you is going to quit because maybe the pay is low or maybe the hours are long and then eventually you'll be the last one standing. As long as you can stick out at least a few years of like grinding in the fashion industry, it can be really rewarding. And there is a lot of jobs in it. They're not always fashion design jobs, but there's technical designers, there's stylists, there's buyers, there's merchandisers, there's you know, all kinds of different industry professionals that you can kind of flow into. So definitely keep your options open. And if you get opportunities, take them. Even though it's not your dream job, take it, learn from it, move on to the next one and just kind of climb. By learning more skills, you're gonna be able to have a, a thicker resume, but also if you start your own fashion line, you can stay lean by doing a lot of your own work, your own pattern making, your own graphic design, your own web design. Anything you can do is gonna help you grow your business. I think working in the fashion industry kind of gets a bad rap for like people being very superficial or being mean. And at least in Chicago, that has not been the case for me. I think people who are really generous and nice and kind are the people that other people want to support. So being a good person and being friendly and being ethical and treating your vendors with respect is going to get you way farther than being competitive, especially in Chicago where everyone knows everyone. It's a really good idea to be like a good person and be open to everyone. And then you never know what kind of opportunities are going to come your way because of it. We are currently working with 15 fashion brands at Hobbit Fashion Studio. We are coordinating their production. We are helping them create new styles and most of them are launching this year. So we have a lot of really exciting fashion designers in the works that will be out in the next year. So keep an eye on all those.